Graham reckons the 1500 will eat other dual cab utes for breakfast. And it's got the recipe to do it as well. It's a big engine under the bonnet and it's a big American ute overall. But does it have the appetite to tow another dual cab ute? We've got the Car Advice Triton up on the trailer here. Not broken down, just ballast for today. And that's weighing in at about 2.7 tonnes, including the trailer. How's this thing going to tow it? And how much fuel is it going to use? I reckon it's always better when your tow rig is a bit on the big side in terms of weight, in terms of size, but also in terms of wheelbase. It can help stop the trailer pushing the car around and this Ram, obviously, it's a big rig and that works to its benefit. This trailer, I can feel it there. There's a little bit of ball weight for the car to contend with, but it handles it really nicely. The car's not shifting or squirming at all. It just feels nice and steady and settled. What else feels nice and steady is the engine. This thing it's still sitting at 1,000, 1,500 RPM. Unless you really give it a heap of throttle, it's happy just to cruise along in those low revs and it just makes the car feel really relaxed, really settled. It's just handling the load really nicely. Being such a big vehicle, this thing is a bit different to drive than a normal dual cab ute. The bonnet's big, you gotta get used to the size of the vehicle. Uh, the corners are a bit hard to see. But you do get really big side mirrors here. So with this trailer on the back, I've got a really good view of it all the time, going around corners and making sure I'm not clipping anything. I'm sure if your trailer was quite small or it was a little jet ski or something, you'd probably lose it. You wouldn't even notice it there behind you. So to the elephant in the room, fuel consumption. This thing currently, cruising along doing about 60 k's an hour, I can get it down to between 10, 12, maybe up to 14 litres per 100 k's on the flat. But in average, overall, I'm using around 19, 20, 21 litres per 100. That's not going too hard, but it is in a bit of stop-start traffic at traffic lights and things like that. So the car is working fairly hard. And I think that's pretty good, actually. I mean, the car is doing it so relaxed. You could get a more efficient engine out there, a smaller diesel or something like that. But that would be struggling to pull this weight all the time, and it just wouldn't have that sense of confidence that this car has towing. For me, that's a pretty important thing. If you're towing for long periods of time, this car will start to pay dividends, I think. So the Ram Laramie that we're in at the moment is the 3.5 tonne towing capacity version. There is one with four and a half tonnes towing and they change the diff ratios, make them shorter, and that gives you the higher towing capacity overall. Both cars have the same V8, that's a Hemi 5.7 litre V8. That makes 291 kilowatts and 556 newton meters. What, unlike most other dual cab utes, this thing is a petrol, big Hemi V8 petrol as well. But also it hasn't got leaf springs in the back. There's actually coil springs and coil springs up the front too. So that gives a pretty good ride. And importantly, it handles the weight of a trailer pretty well. So that long wheelbase that this thing has, it's about 600 mil longer than a Ford Ranger. It's really nice for towing, keeps things nice and steady. But I was actually surprised about how good the turning circle is in this car. It's probably better than my own vehicle, to be honest. It actually doesn't do too bad of a job. And that's pretty handy when you're negotiating with a trailer, trying to do a U-turn or a three-point turn. It's pretty handy being able to tuck it in a little bit tighter. So, if you're looking at something like a Nissan Patrol, a Y62, a Toyota Land Cruiser 200, or you're looking at a really high-spec dual-cab ute, um, top-spec Amarok, top-spec Ranger. This thing, being 100 grand or 80 grand for the lower-spec one, isn't that too far away as a jump. And to be honest, if you haven't at least test-driven it, you're probably doing yourself a disservice because this might fit you really nicely.